to us about Delta Lloyd's journey with IT for IT. After that, we'll have some coffee, and then we will meet both Rob, Lars, Mary Jarrett, and our fourth speaker in the panel at the end of the afternoon. So, Rob, thanks very much. Thank you. Yes, the IT organization, they, it needs to reinvent itself, reinvent itself, and you see a number of significant changes happening in the IT industry, which really require a fundamental different, different approach to how we manage and operate the IT function. A, a new operating model is needed, as, as Mary Jarrett in her presentation also described this morning. And this new operating model, that is what the IT for IT reference architecture provides. Now, this presentation is about why and how Delta Lloyd has applied this model to improve and prepare itself for this new IT role, new IT function. Um, my name is Rob Akershoek. I work for Logic Commons, but I am an IT management architect working at Delta Lloyd to implement this relatively new IT for IT reference architecture. And I'm also still engaged at Shell in the IT for IT organization there and working closely with Karel van Zeeland on this topic. So let me go into the agenda. So this presentation is briefly showing what, what is Delta Lloyd as an organization, and then I'm zooming into what are the challenges of the IT organization, and that is typically relevant for any IT organization out there, uh, and typically also in the financial industry. So we're looking at what kind of challenges does a new IT organization have, and what, how do, we, do they need to respond to this? And then I'm looking at the IT for IT reference architecture and show you how Delta Lloyd has applied this internally. So, let me go to Delta Lloyd as an organization. So, Delta Lloyd is a financial services organization focusing on services in the Netherlands and Belgium. It's an insurance organization providing pensions and banking services. And specifically in the, in the financial industry, IT has a significant impact of how they need to operate. Not only from a new mobility perspective, mobile apps, but also from a security compliance perspective. So, it's a challenging environment. Um, so briefly introducing Delta Lloyd as an organization, Delta Lloyd has about 4 million customers which use a lot of the IT directly. It's mobile apps, like one of the brands is Aura, and, and anything that they deliver is done through internet or through mobile apps. So it's a car insurance, for example, or other insurances. You do them through your mobile app and directly communicate and collaborate with the business. Now, some figures, about 600 business applications that Delta Lloyd is managing. Uh, of and they have about 1,200 servers with a lot of different technologies like VMware, HP, IBM. So I think relatively a standard infrastructure as, as a lot of organizations have with virtualization in place. 700 IT staff and about, uh, about 5,000 desktop laptops they need to maintain. But you can imagine the, the, the IT is much bigger than the internal IT staff because basically IT supports 4 million customers directly interacting with the IT organization. So you can imagine that the new IT has a major impact on the financial industry. As you can see here, this is a statement coming from the annual report of Delta Lloyd last year. And they realized that IT is really a very important ingredient of their success uh, in their line of business. It's not just about 24 by 7 services, it's also about interacting, communicating with your customers and the user experience and mobile applications they need to develop. Uh, but also you need to use modern technologies like big data to understand what customers are saying about the organization, like in, in tweets. Yeah? So there's a lot of changes there in their IT estates, as you can see. So what, what are those challenges of an IT organization within a financial institution? But you can imagine, in traditionally, we had an IT organization that delivers different services to the, to the business. But now, you see that the business has opportunities to directly buy services of the market, standard market services like SaaS and PaaS. So there is a risk that the IT department is circumvented. They directly source their own services. And you already see that happening. There, and sometimes that's good that the business can acquire their, or use their own services what they want to use. But one of the challenges is that if the business, and there are different lines of businesses, each developing or sourcing their own application, it's very difficult to integrate. So the vision of the Delta Lloyd IT organization is to really transform itself to become that service broker, to mitigate the risk that applications are acquired by the business at any time and any place. Because in principle, the business wants to take control over IT. Yeah, and that's a key 
key chains that you see in the market. The business directly wants to determine how they consume apps, when, what capacities allocate. They want more control, which the traditional IT department could not provide. And that's where it for it comes in. To build this service integration model and deliver the services from, from a, basically a, from a standard portfolio, fully integrated. Yeah, so that's the direction. And, and if, if regular IT organizations are not ready for this, there is really a risk or an opportunity for the business to, to just buy the service themselves. Because as I stated before, business wants to be in control of IT. And they will get that or through here or directly through a SaaS vendor. So, the, so we start the journey as defining what, what kind of IT organization do we need to have in a financial institution like Deltoid. And this is their vision of the IT organization needs to be flexible, agile, fast, lightweight, sustainable, and stable. And, and they do sponsor both. This is the Volvo Ocean Race. So they foresee that the IT organization needs to be like that. right? It's, uh, it needs to be flexible, stable. And everything we do in IT needs to reflect this, meaning that your process designs, the people that live and work in the IT organization, the tools you use, they need to be agile and lightweight as well. So we don't want big, heavy tools that you need a lot of customizations. You need light tools that you can implement fast and support that vision. Right? It, is not it must be part of the DNA of the entire IT organization to have this. Now, so I think this is a slide that shows you one of the challenges and, and also the goals that IT organization in Deltaloid has. And I think it's, I think, well, uh, probably the same as many larger IT organizations. These are all the, the challenges and the things that IT needs to deliver. So one of the things, it, it needs to deliver services, right, and not the technology anymore. And that's what that we call the service-defined enterprise. Everything needs to be delivered as a service, so it starts with the services. And, uh, well, if you can, you can read, it's about full cost transparency, but at the same time, we need to introduce new capabilities like big data, mobile, and, and, all, and cloud. Um, and at the same time, uh, manage all the security and risk and compliance, which is mandatory in the financial industry. Uh, fully automate, there's more and more need to automate processes, like request to fulfillment. We don't want people to manually uh, perform activities which you could automate. Uh, other things like the technology infrastructure will change, and I will start with that later, because the traditional infrastructure, although it is virtualized already, is not that flexible. The cost structure is not flexible. So if the business demand go up, it's not easy to scale, or when it goes down in some time, you, you cannot scale down. So the IT infrastructure is not scalable in, in a traditional IT organization. So all these things together are the ingredients to build a, a new IT organization. So the question is, um, you probably know Gordon Ramsay in his program where he does a turnaround on restaurants, right? He, he looks at restaurants that are failing to deliver customer service and, so the, and he basically does a turnaround, a complete turnaround of a, of a business in a few weeks of time. And do you know where he starts with? So what do you think where he starts with to improve things? An, anybody an idea? Well, he starts at, I will not say the word, but he starts with a menu. He normally puts something in front of that. It's the, it's the menu. There is where you start. So you need to understand what are the services you deliver to your customer and then start to improve that. It's like the shell journey starting to with your portfolios that you have and your services that you deliver. And if you don't have this menu, you cannot even start a journey. And if you don't have this menu, you probably end up yourself on the menu for Christmas, right? And that's what where we need. We ne you need to have this. So one of the first things we started is look at how does this menu evolve in the IT organization over time. And there are key changes happening. Um, you, you probably, most organizations are in that virtualization phase already. So let me skip the traditional one where you have your dedicated hardware and servers allocated to a specific application. And, and this is where the, the most organizations are with the virtualization layer on top of it. But a lot of organizations nowadays find that this is not uh, easy to manage because this layer, how it's been organized in most IT organizations, they have a shared storage layer and a shared s uh, compute layer, and then they put virtualization on top of that. In reality, that doesn't seem to work because the storage doesn't scale to all the type of applications you host. And a lot of organizations now find out that if they have a shared
shared storage across all the apps. It does not scale. It does not work. It's not performing. So there's a new paradigm that uh, is applying internally as well. It's like what's called converged infrastructure or, or multi-cloud environment, where you have different infrastructure service stacks with its own storage, its own compute, and a pass stack like a shared uh, web sphere environment where you can host your applications. And it's managed as a separate stack. And I will come to that, why that is important. Because this stack will determine what you need to do to manage. Because every how you manage this requires different capabilities than in the previous um, world. Because each of these stacks come with their own capabilities to manage these stacks. And that has a big impact on how you operate. So at the journey at Deltoid, we find out that you need to think about this new stack what are the capabilities you need to manage that, these new services. So let me briefly show you how that works in general. So you have this standard stack, like a SaaS application stack, or a PaaS stack, and an infrastructure stack. And, and typically, any organization has three of those stacks internally, where all the services will be hosted on. And if it's a SaaS, it sounds very simple, but I will come to that. Now, the WebSphere stack at Deltoid is a shared PaaS environment, where we would like to land all the WebSphere applications. And there's a lot of WebSphere applications used for all the mobile apps that are delivered out in the market to, to have the online uh, insurance policy processes supported. And that's typically run on WebSphere. And this is a, a, a shared platform where you can deploy a new application quickly and also scale. And there's a, a traditional stack, more the, the converged infrastructure stack on the infrastructure as a service. And this is running internally still, SaaS not, of course, that's external, but you have a hybrid mode. But you'd quickly introduce that what you need is capabilities suddenly to, to, to spin up a virtual machine and then configure middleware. But if you want to configure and load your, deploy your application, you need capabilities to, to run and deploy an application, and on the web are the same. And then you have the same capability, then you need to configure the application on top of that. And you see for SaaS or for PaaS, you still need that capability to configure your application, like configure business rules, configure your workflows and policies and integrations. Uh, then you need to configure and load the data. You can imagine you need to build interfaces, and then you need to manage your access. Now, if you consider that, the idea is that we have a standard way to manage this stack. Because although there will be new stacks delivered over time, you want to have a standardized method to deploy, manage, and have the full transparency of an application using what resources going down. And, and, and that's where we have started on, is working on, okay, how does that work? We have standard management capabilities typically built in these stacks. I will not go into much detail of that, but you can imagine that's a given. If you have a stack with VMware, we use VMware solutions to manage that. And on top of that, you have a sort of you know, service catalog layer, automation layer, in, what IT for IT reference architecture also provides as a descriptive method is saying, okay, you need a self-service portal where people can request resources. Then you need a, a broker function and an orchestration function and monitoring. So, so you can imagine that's not a simple task. You need to think about how you organize that. And I will go into that in a little bit more detail. And we want that, of course, to be integrated with standard APIs instead of you know, reinventing the wheel yourself. But it's not about the infrastructure stack only, right? It's about the entire life cycle as the IT for IT reference architecture thinks about. It's from idea to market, let's say, from a, from a, from a strategy to the actual provisioning. And, and you see that in traditional IT organizations that there are a lot of, let's say, walls in between the, the business unit that has an idea, goes to the development unit, they develop something, and then it's de deployed uh, and, and, and for continuous operations. And you can imagine there are today there are a number of those walls in between. And IT for IT try to break down the walls and have one integrated workflow. Uh, and the infrastructure stack, application stack, and then the infrastructure provisioning, application provisioning. Now, and that's not a simple task, right? And this diagram shows how complex uh, IT management is because this is everything an IT organization needs to do. And any organization of a significant size is doing these activities already. We have this all in place. Any organization that we, any IT organization has this. So all these activities are performed, maybe not always formal, but they are done, maybe through a spreadsheet, but all things are done. Like we do some monitoring, we have supplier management, we do, we do business continuity, we have pest management. All these processes are there. We have a lot of data that we manage, and all the data that's documented here is a 
available in IT organization, one format or another, right? We have we manage our financials, we manage our contract costs, we manage our documents, known errors, problems, defects, and so on. And you can imagine how complex that is. And we also have, and any organization has that, all these tools that are highlighted there, they're all there. They're, we have a CMDB, we've got monitoring tools, project portfolio tools, time writing tools, deployment tools, one way or another, and of course a lot of spreadsheets to maintain and manage. But every or IT organization has this. And, and it could be an identity and access management tool or a security monitoring tool, it's all there. Now one of the challenges is that this is already implemented in any IT organization. You can imagine how challenging it is to improve that and move to a target state. Because this, in history, has not been defined because there was no IT for IT reference architecture. So typically this has been implemented you know, in a specific line of business, in its own way. And, and so every business has done it differently. And that's the key challenge. You have something now and you want to move to something new. Now, wh where do you start? And that's basically the IT for IT reference architecture. Because the IT for IT reference architecture provides that bigger picture. It really shows you how everything is connected. And that is fundamentally different how most IT organizations look at themselves. They don't have that end-to-end -end picture. If you ask anybody in your own IT organization and ask them, how does a new demand is raised and how does it get into production? I, I'm, I'm sure you, you don't get that answer. Or that it's not the same. It's because it's not defined and documented end-to-end. -end. They have pieces of it. There's maybe a project management standard, how to deliver projects. Or or test management standards, but not end-to-end. -end. And this is what the IT for IT reference architecture provides. It provides a structure. And the good thing is you can use this from the start. You don't need to implement this first. You use it as your blueprint and check where you are today, what are the gaps, as Mary also pointed out. And the journey is probably different for each IT organization, what they have in place and where do you, what's next. So I, I will not go into much detail of this because it has been introduced by Lars as well. But it's important to start with these value streams. So one of the first things we started with is identifying in the deltoid organization who is responsible for the end-to-end -end value stream. And then identify an architect, an IT for IT architect, that is responsible for also for the end-to-end. -end. And then have a, a number of uh, leads for each uh, value stream. And that lead will look at its own practices and how to improve that function. I I'll come back, back to that later. Now, uh, just to illustrate why you need a IT reference architecture, IT for IT reference architecture. Because if you look at today, detect to correct. Anything we do today, there's an incident detected, and what do we need to do, or there's an exception detected, what do we need to do to resolve it? And you can imagine, if you look at the entire chain, that you cannot do that with the, in the current way of working, with individual processes and tools not linked. Because what's happening is, for example, in this case, an, a security alarm comes in. And a security event is typically monitored by a vulnerability management system that monitors potentially vulnerabilities or attacks. So there is an event raised. That event is sent to a central security, um, security system where all the security events are combined. Uh, it's typically called a SIEM or event management system. And there is a security team that looks at those events. And then they determine what is the priority, what's happening here, what are the actions we need to take. Now, typically, the security team cannot take these actions. So they need to say, OK, what is this? Uh, let's say it's a vulnerability on, an, on a specific application component. They need to create an incident or a problem and assign it to the correct team that needs to resolve it. Now, typically, they need to seem to be to find it out. And a lot of security tools, they don't know. They have no clue about what is connected, what is this uh, server doing, and for whom, and which application runs on it. So the next step is, you know, raise an incident, and, and then you need your CMDB and an incident management system. And then you need, let's say, implement a fix or a new patch on the, of the application to correct it. Then we need a change management system and change process, and there's a approval needed, and then we need to create a package for that, and we need to develop and test and deploy that into test and then in production to apply this patch or fix. Now, you can imagine, if you don't have an integrated workflow, this can take months, and you cannot wait months before a vulnerability is resolved. And in this use case, it's a vulnerability that really needs some coding change on the application, or at least a new package to be deployed. You need to go through all the steps to do this. And you can imagine, we, we need to do this more efficient flow end-to-end. -end. And that's why IT, but you need IT for IT to do that. You cannot do that in the traditional way, like we implemented security monitoring, we implemented a change process and an incident management system. That doesn't work end-to-end. Um, and the same 
for requirement to deploy, I will go through this more quickly, but you have a similar. If there's a requirement coming in, it needs to be developed, tested, deployed, and, and so on. And there's a lot of people involved, there's a lot of tools involved again, and yeah, and that's the same challenge. A lot of individual packages and tools you use to manage this entire flow. And if each tool does it in its own way, then you can imagine there's no really interconnectivity. So the idea and the vision uh, that IT4IT as a reference architect provide is basically to say, what do we need to manage in IT organization? What are all the activities we need to do? Running from project activity, development, testing activity, or incident management activities, all these activities. And with Deltaloid, the vision was, let's create a single management system to manage all the tasks in the IT organization. So that we can assign the task to different teams that are involved in development and testing and operations. And because you see now more and more in DevOps that the same person that works on incidents are also working on development tasks, or they do project tasks, or they do test tasks. So you see that one person is typically involved in a lot of different processes and activities. Now you can imagine that if he needs to go through 10 different systems to see what task he needs to perform, and what has priority, you can imagine the challenges that person has. So he needs to look at an incident management system, change management system, a defect tool, because typically the more and more people working on multiple topics at the same time. So the division that uh, IT4IT will provide is that integration, and at Deltaloid they really are looking for an integrated layer across all these activities you do in the IT organization. It's a kind of creating a single backlog. Now that's where the IT4IT reference architecture is used as the blueprint. So it's used as a, a backdrop to start, okay, how are we organized today? What needs to be changed? So there's a whole roadmap created based on this model. Now let me go into the component part of tools. So for each value stream, you typically need, uh, there are a number of functional components identified like uh, in presented in the last slide. To implement these functional components, you again need some tools. And these are just examples of the building blocks you need. And uh, I, I highlighted them, them before. But every or organization has all these building blocks in its uh, organization. So the, the idea is that if you select tools to support these building blocks, you need to carefully think about integration end to end using the it for it reference architecture. So selecting a portfolio management system that can integrate with your service portfolio or integrate with development tools or with your catalog and, and incident management components. And that's a challenge because today you already have tools in all these areas. You've got maybe Microsoft for the, for the monitoring or deployment, VMware for deployment, HP for portfolio management and test management and Microsoft development and Jira. There are a lot of tools that already are out there. And then there is an, that, is, that is basically the challenge that we face in a lot of IT organizations, that every tool has its own connectors. And this is like uh, you have Lego connects and, and different tools. And this is what we see in IT organizations as well. Each has its own adapters and its own integrations. And y I can, your connects you cannot really easily connect to Lego, you can imagine. And this is what we see in IT organizations as well. If you have a, a vendor A and a vendor B and want to integrate, like automated provisioning or monitoring, it is a big challenge since today. Now, so what we need is this. Yeah? It's, it's a universal construction kit. And, and <laughs> IT4IT is that kit, right? It's, uh, it's, it, it's maybe not on the lowest level as Lars was explaining, but this is what we are ha targeting for. And uh, this is then the Thingiverse. I'm not sure if you know Thingiverse, but um, it's, I have a 3D printer at home. So uh, I can print, like, uh, I want a connector for Connects and Lego, I can print it, and then I can connect the elements. And for IT for IT, we're looking at the same capabilities, that we have a, a, a portal, let's say, where all the connectors are delivered as a service. So you can download a connector for project portfolio management to another system or test management. Yeah, you can download these, these blocks uh, to interconnect. That it's not there, of course, today, but you can imagine that's the direction we want to go to. You have anything to anything that can be connected and you implement it and download it in your own IT organization. Yeah? Uh, and to, and it's not there today, right? But you can imagine that, that's the way we're looking at it. It needs to be standardized, open, to communicate. And it's, and, uh, it's an awful looking thing, but this can connect to anything, right? So it's, uh, it's basically our IT for IT uh, reference architecture, but then on the level four or, or five. Um, okay. 
Delta Lloyd, looking at the journey. And I think the journey that is displayed here is, is similar as you can do it in your own organization. Because the approach is not that much different as you need to take to any, any IT organization. So the approach is very roughly shown here. I will not go through all the, the bullets. But you can imagine you start with the big picture. That, that's the key, right? You don't zoom in and because if you, if you start with an inventory of everything you do already or improve, then you you, you need to, maybe you need to look at new project management systems, test management tools. You, if you now do an inventory of all the things you're already doing as improvements, there are probably 20 or 30 projects running. It could be improving test management, deliver agile delivery, improving the project management, chargeback, anything. But for the IT5T implementation, you need to think one step back and say, what does the end-to-end -end picture look like? So you take the IT5T reference architecture. And then you plot how you do that today. So that's where we started. But before you can start, you need to create a, mi a management vision. What is my IT organization looking like in the, in, the, in the coming three years? Because if you don't have that vision, uh, then the reference architecture would not help that much either. So you start is what is my new role as an IT organization? What is my strategy, my vision on IT management? Then you sell that internally, and then you get buy-in, and we start with an IT for IT reference architecture review. So it's basically, you take the reference architecture and you plot how you do the, all these components today. So how does your tool architecture look like? How does your process model, how's your data model, how's the organization with the skills and roles are positioned? And then you can plot that to the it for it reference architecture. Identify the gaps, because in the reference architecture you see what should be connected and what components do you need. And then you can easily see where are the gaps potentially in your in your model or where you have duplicate tools or inconsistent processes. And, so, and then based on that, you're defining a sort of target state using the reference architecture again, and then prioritize what, what do you need to do first. Like in the Shell uh, journey that started, uh, I, I think uh, you could almost say 12 years ago, first se standardizing the service management system in the CMB. And then, and as Mary showed later on, the financial management start ahead of IT business management first uh, as a first step after that. So every organization has its own steps to take, right? So if you look at the Deltoid organization, we, we took the it 5 reference architecture that's like displayed here as a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different format. And every component is plotted in how do we do that today, what are the tools, are the process, who's responsible, who's accountable, as kind of a quick scan. And then we identified what are the, the gaps. As you can see here, some colored lines is there are tools that are not strategic or can be replaced. There are custom home grown grown solutions, or we have inconsistent data sets for managing project costs, for example. We look at the process maturity, so the different processes in the IT organization with different level of maturity, or even not documented, or there, but not always fully standardized. And so we looked at all those things, yeah? and then uh, develop a target vision, again, using the IT for IT reference architecture as your model, and then starting to say, how does my future blueprint look like? What tools do I need there? And what can I reuse what I have today? And where do I need to invest first? Um, okay. And one of the first steps we need to do is, is defining what is the engine that really runs the end-to-end -end value streams. Because I still need different tools for development and deployment and orchestration and monitoring and also potentially for contract and enterprise architecture and project portfolio management. But I want to make a common platform where I manage my IT tasks. And, and that was one of the first steps uh, uh, to be selected. That platform I I is using a standard reference model, it's called IT Guardian, where we model those processes so that you have an end-to-end -end view. But you, you imagine that one tool cannot solve it, right? You need integrations with orchestration tools like for VMware, a uh, development and testing tool like HP is used for test management. So all the integrations, they need to come together. Um, then looking at this, because if you look at the big picture, you may identify 30 projects you need to do over time. So then you need to prioritize what is the right order. Now in Delta Lloyd, uh, we looked at what are the prioritizations. And, and the first step, basically, if you look at the priori prioritization, is building the IT for IT common platform with the basic instant problem and change, seeing the Bs, SLA, that was the foundation. And on top of that, we had the different uh, value streams were implemented after that. So it's a, it's, it's a journey still is going on. But you can imagine there's a phased approach because you don't get the budget to do it all. You first need to show that it works, have the 
benefits, get uh, the business value directly, and then move to the next step. Um, and the first step was shown in this picture, is to build that common framework, and that the business can order through a self-service portal the, the different services they need to they want to consume, uh, fully up, and then after that, fully automated provisioned. Um, and so th the key thing is here about phased approach. And because Deltaloid is moving to a new cloud, internal hybrid cloud environment, that was also a, a good opportunity to start uh, with this, it's not a green field, but it's a good way to start. So if your IT organization also moving to the cloud, then it's the best approach is to immediately make sure that anything that's deployed to this new cloud is directly delivered through this standard IT4IT model, so that from day one you're in control. Now this, this shows you the roadmap of how, has, you know, what are the key phases and the order what's been taken. So you see the first the it 4 it blueprint was created, then the base system was implemented, and then you have each value stream is coming after that. So request to fulfill is the first value stream that's implemented. And the reason for that is that because that's heavily repetitive with a lot of automation possibilities, because the service portfolio was already there, there was already a good catalog of all the services and applications that are out there. So the best start was starting at the request fulfillment to make sure that everything that's provisioned into the cloud is managed and directly understood to which application that belongs, what does it cost. So that was the first step. And the rest we still need to come. So we talk about the next step, detect to correct, having the monitoring capabilities in place uh, that triggers the rec restoration or recovery actions. And then the requirement to deploy, uh, getting into agile development. I'm not saying that this is not done because Scrum and Agile development is already started and you use different solutions like Jira for that. But the idea is that we cannot integrate everything in day one into that framework. So those people are still already working on Agile development and we make sure that what they are doing can be later easily integrated into the overall framework. Because typically you cannot, everything what you ha is shown here, it's already happening in the IT organization one way or another. So you can imagine the, the steps we need to go through and then the last part is strategy to portfolio. Uh, you, you could argue why is that in the, in the last part, but I explained to you uh, there is already a service portfolio, so there are different way, routes you can take to implement this. Then, it's not just about the tools, because I, I talked a lot about capabilities and tools, it's also about the new organization. So I would like to share you a bit about how does the new IT organization look, look like, what new skills are needed to operate that new IT organization. So it's, it's also a mindset. And um, I think that, that Mary um, you know, explained it also very well this morning, that ty typically, and in an IT organization, different departments want their own thing. They think that this is good for their project portfolio management, or they think this is best for Java test management, or this is best tool for, for requirements engineering. And any team has its own preferences, right? But the, the mindset that needs to change is that we need to think about the end-to-end -end flow. We don't need the best testing tool. We don't need the best seem to be or discovery tool. We want a solution that really supports the end-to-end -end flow. And that really is a new mindset because uh, a team that does test management only typically wants the best test tool. And a team that only manages projects, like a PMO, wants the best project portfolio management system. So we need to balance that all the time and say, no, we don't want the best test tool. We first need to look at the whole, uh, like what Lars was saying, a service backbone. So that we can share data and get visibility on the costs and what's going well and, how and continuously improve. And we probably end up with multiple test management tools, but at least one system where we manage all the defects. Yeah, because for Java testing and .NET, you might need different testing plugins, right? So that typically is still needed. Um, so it's all about the, the mindset of people and taking ownership and, and try to get a central team uh, working with these practitioners to come with the right end-to-end -end solution. So how does that new organization look like? Now this is the, the old organization, and as you can see, the, the previous organization was focused on technologies. So you had a team that looked at specific uh, technologies, like a network team and a storage team and a Windows team and a Linux, Linux team. So each have their own set of infrastructure teams. And then you have different line of businesses for insurance, banking, and pension. Each line of business had their own applications, and they interact with the IT organizations through a service management layer and, and, and service, service managers. In a new organization, uh, the idea is that we say we, we deliver a similar as an Amazon, just 
cloud services, we deliver a common platform where you can host your applications. So there will be a service broker that provides these services to the different line of businesses, which they can then order and, and build their applications. And on top of that, you have different DevOps teams building applications in each of line of business. It doesn't mean that everything is delivered through DevOps, because there's still ops in the cloud, right? We still have an operations team working on the cloud services. And the key thing is that every cloud service out there is also managed as a service. That is developed like a new web sphere service is developed and then provided to the development teams. Everything is a service, uh, a service-oriented enterprise. And then you have the different teams, they interact with the cloud broker to order and consume. And the difference is now the business is in control of what co resources they need. And they can see the resources and can start and stop things, right? And a business I sometimes mean is, is the, or the, the application IT team that's running there, and even the business the end users themselves, right? They can say, I don't need the software anymore. And that, and that means that you also need to think about new roles in the IT organization. So if you look at the value stream, for each of these value streams, there are key skills and roles you need in the IT organization. And there are a few changes, because you still need developers, testers, and project managers. But there are a few new roles we see, in this case, in a Delta Lord organization, is IT for IT architect, of course, uh, but also portfolio managers that really think about portfolios, and not just managing a portfolio from an administrative perspective, but they own the portfolio, look at the investment, they look at the Im continuous improvement on, of services. Uh, the, there is an automation specialist that can really help deployment automation because that is still a specialist role. You cannot have anybody develop deployment scripts or automation scripts. It's still a specialized area at this moment. So you need a team that can automate uh, repetitive tasks. And, and the cloud automation engineer, that person that can configure the cloud and make it consumable for, for the different teams. Uh, and then there is also more new roles in related to financial management and, and capacity management, for example, also changes. Uh, in, in the past, capacity management was done on CPU and memory and disk. You still have that, but now you need to think about what is my business demand? Are, do we see a trend in, in, in volume? Uh, if we have more online transactions through mobile apps, we need to spin off additional web servers on the WebSphere farm to cater for all those transactions. And you see that in Deltoid, if it's a winter time and there's more accidents on the road, you have more insurance claims. So we need to spin up more web servers to, 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 to balance that load in, in, in slippery, uh, in, in winter time when there's a lot of snow. And, and you see that, and you want the response time to the consumer needs to be good. Um, now, how do you sell IT for IT? Uh, we had that uh, discussion this morning as well, and, and, and this is typically bankers, right? If you look at these people. Uh, the IT, or, uh, Delta Lloyd is an organization started in 1807. Not, not that these people are from 1807, but you can imagine if you want to sell IT for IT at bankers, yeah, you get these kind of comments, right? So, who asked for this, they ask. I mean, are we, are we already doing fine? Uh, we had a Gardner benchmark, and Delta Lloyd was performing very well. It was in the top 20 or top 10. In the, uh, they're a very efficient run IT organization. So people challenge us, why do we need to change? We're already very good, so what, what can we improve? Uh, and the business case, yeah? So, that's one of the challenges we faced, and we had to explain what is the business case. And similar as Mary was explaining, in, in a sense, the business case is different per value stream or w in the life cycle where you are. But it's really a challenge, right? Now, one of the things w uh, we do to get business buy-in is to create a model office. And a model office is a kind of experience center where in the Deltoid organization you set up uh, the, uh, a sort of room. It's not a round room as here, it would be nice, but uh, it was too expensive to build a round room, so you know, a square is also fine. And then we model the different processes and roles, and then the business or development teams can come in and experience the new way of working. And a new way of working in the sense that you could show how the end-to-end -end workflow will, will, will flow, if there's a business demand, how will that go through the systems, and al although not everything is already being developed, right, because it typically requires a lot of work, but you can do uh, a number of integrations and showcases to demonstrate, imagine we have a security incident and it needs to flow through IT organization, and then you engage with people, how does that work? And how does it go from one uh, to another team? And identify issues, and then we show how in the new model it works. And 
then you get buy-in, uh, not just from the uh, IT manager or the, uh, the business side or the CIO, you also get buy-in from the different teams that, that thought that they can do better themselves, that they had their own te best test tool or the best uh, monitoring tool. Yeah? So that, that really helps to get people motivated to work on this new model, because that's what we wanted. We wanted people to mobilize and get enthusiastic about this new way of working, and, and that worked. Now, I'm not sure if you know the Phoenix Project as a book, right? but it's, it's a book about uh, uh, typically an IT organization where it runs into what kind of problems it runs into in, in, in how it is IT organization. So I recommend it as a reading. It's, it is maybe not uh, the most sophisticated book in the sense that uh, it's explaining how things are or should be improved, but it's really nice and eye-openers that maybe a lot of IT organizations are not that well organized. There's not a single, for example, change register with all the changes that are planned for the weekend, for example. So that's really uh, an interesting uh, book. And, and, um, and, and, and only if had they had IT for IT, right? They didn't have that issue, and unfortunately it was not described in the book. Now, at my last um, notes from this uh, presentation. So a lot of people see this as a scary project or a scary program. It's basically a transition from the current IT to 